Well, you know, a lot of people are, are asking about uh, beach fishing in the summer and, and specifically about snook, which uh, seems to be the number one target during the summer and quite honestly is probably when they're most plentiful out there. But, uh, you know, I love getting out on the beach, uh, especially as a wade fisherman or shorebound angler. There's lots of beaches, uh, which gives you a lot of areas to fish. And uh, a lot of the beaches uh, may look featureless, but the fact is you're looking for the same things along those beaches that you are anywhere you're looking for fish. So we're looking for birds, which typically will indicate we've got bait. In fact, this spot that we're here right now, you'll see there's birds all over the place. We've seen a number of, uh, of, of situations where we've had jacks uh, chasing bait down and boiling up. So we know, again, the birds uh, have brought us here where there's bait. Uh, we, we know there's fish here because we've seen them up there uh, attacking the bait. Uh, and the reason that they're all here is because we've got a lot of current. And uh, it just so happens we're at the point of a beach here right now. And so we've got, we've got a strong tide that's running from kind of left to right here and around this point. And so that current is, is funneling all the bait here. And, and then the structure here, again, you wouldn't say there's really necessarily any obvious structure, but the structure is a little more subtle in the fact that what we've got is a deep drop off uh, that extends not too far out from the shoreline here. So, you know, we're less than probably, you know, maybe 50 yards, 60 yards from a deep drop off that then leads on to a, a wide uh, sand flat. But it's that uh, difference between the deep and the shallow water that creates the structure. You also have some grass along that deep edge. Uh, but that's th that anytime you've got uh, sand that meets grass, grass that meets sand, or you've got uh, rocks, and again, it's sometimes more obvious structure, and you're lucky you'll see like we've got over here, we actually have some downed trees that are into the water. In this case, we have a point. And we, what we have here actually is the tide coming on uh, in the same direction from both sides of the point, creating kind of a rip at the end. So again, all the kind of things that you're looking for. We've got tidal movement, we've got bait. Those are all the things that bring, uh, that bring the fish in here. Uh, on the other side of this little uh, barrier island, we've also got a, a great swash channel that runs all the way along the beach. And what that is, that's just a deeper trough, and it may be three, four feet deep, but it's, it's close to the shoreline. It's actually fairly dramatic. And, uh, and it funnels all the, the, the current and the bait and where there's the bait and there's current. And, and again, the swash is the structure itself, you're gonna find fish. But those are the great areas for finding snook along the beaches in the summertime. So again, I just find beaches and, and again, they're often, your first look is, wow, that's really featureless. But look for areas where you might have a, a subtle, uh, might be just slightly deeper than other, other areas. You've got a sandbar that's out, you'll see waves breaking a little bit further out. Uh, that typically indicates the sandbar and you're looking for that swash between that sandbar and the shoreline here. Uh, but again, it's, it's, it's what we keep talking about, right? It's, it's bait, it's, it's current or tidal movement and, uh, and structure. Um, and in this case, we have all kinds of structure, all kinds of bait, got the birds flying around here. This is as snooky as it gets right in here and these are the kinds of things that I look for. You know, my, my t typical beach setup, uh, especially when I'm targeting snook, is, uh, is a little heavier than I might uh, use when I'm fishing for trout in the wintertime or even redfish. Um, I step up to a medium action rod. This is a seven and a half foot uh, St. Croix Avid rod. Um, I've, I've got a, uh, a 4,000 sustained reel on here. Now I will tell you, I still have 10 pound test. Uh, I do step up my leader. I've got uh, about uh, four, four and a half, five feet of uh, 30 pound fluorocarbon leader tied on onto my, uh, my main line. Uh, I use a uni to uni knot uh, only because it's really tough, at least for me, to tie an FG knot while I'm out waist deep in the water and the wind's blowing. So uh, that's the knot I use here out here at this point and I'm typically pretty, uh, pretty comfortable with it. But again, it's maybe a little heavier than you might expect, uh, but um, again, I, I like to try to, uh, to bring these fish in pretty quickly and not wear them out, especially when the water's 90 plus degrees. You don't want to you don't want to stress these fish out. So I think you got a better chance if you can fight them, get them in quick, and release them quickly, and a better chance for survival. Um, but that's uh, that's pretty much my, my main gear here. I'm typically going to have uh, fishing a quarter ounce uh, jig head, and in this case, I have kind of one of my go-to baits. This is a, a Miralore Little John, and uh, and this is called in their golden brim color. But uh, this is a universal bait for me. I'll catch trout, snook, reds, flounder jacks, mackerel, just anything that swims on this thing. Uh, but it's a really effective uh, snook bait as well. So I like to put it on because if there are reds or trout around, um, there's a good chance that I'll, I'll pick up those as well. But typically, again, it's a quarter ounce bait. Um, I'm fishing it more often than not. And, and you'll see I'm fishing in fairly shallow water, typically no more than three or four feet deep. 
uh, maybe a little deeper when I'm getting out to the, uh, the drop-off here, but I'm throwing it out, letting it get to the bottom. The other thing about most of the beaches, there's not a lot of uh, the type of structure that you're going to get the, the, the jig stuck on, so you don't necessarily need to use a, uh, a weedless rig uh, or a weighted hook here. Um, there's you know, typically not a lot of oyster beds around along the beaches. May come across some rocky areas, and in that case, then you just kind of quicken the retrieve. But uh, almost universally, I'm using a, uh, uh, a, a jig that's just uh, with a bare hook on there, and I think I get a much better uh, hook rate as a result of that. Um, but uh, this is the rig, and so then I'm typically, again, fishing, and it depends. If I've got a nice swash, um, I'm just walking out typically maybe two or three feet. In this case, I'm determining which way the, the, the tide is running. In this case, the tide is running from, from uh, east to west. And so I'm going to actually walk in against the tide, get into the swash, and, I just, and I'm going to just stay there. First of all, it provides a little bit lower profile than if I'm on the beach, because those, those snook can see a long way, if you're, even if you're another three or four feet high. So I'm keeping a low profile. I'm casting up tide or up current, and then I'm retrieving my lure with that tide or that current. And uh, where I like to kind of focus is surprisingly very close to the shoreline. In fact, a lot of times I'll cast this lure right up onto the beach and then bring it back. And then most of these swashes, you're going to have a, uh, a sandbar that's going to be kind of on, uh, in this case, the sandbar will be on the right-hand side. You've got the shoreline on the left. I like to cast it right along that drop of the sandbar and, and the swash. And again, right up, well, right up to the beach. So that's kind of my, my target. So from the beach, and I'm just going to kind of fan cast, work that entire, you can almost think of it as a bowling alley, is what the swash is like. And so I'm just kind of, I'm kind of casting from the left gutter, which would be the beach, and then working my way across the, the lane until I get to the sandbar and then casting up there. But I'm not typically casting out past the sandbar, but just right down the alley. And so those swashes will, you know, they'll, you'll see they'll, they'll go for a while. They may end in, a, in another little sandbar or you may have what they call a run out, and those run outs are great, and usually that's a situation where you've got the, uh, a, a, hits a sandbar, and so that water that's in that trough has to come out somewhere, so it creates almost like a little channel uh, that, that goes, uh, it'll be perpendicular to the way you're, way you're waiting, and you're waiting parallel to the beach. So those run outs are great, so look where those in here, and you'll, typically you'll see maybe there may be a little bit of uh, deeper water, a little darker water, uh, if you're walking down the, the, uh, the swash, you may see that the swash actually ends in, in a sandbar. And often there may be another swash that starts on the other side. But they, it's not very often that you have a, a, a super long continuous swash. They kind of they run and they run into a bar, into a run out, and then you go further down and you look for the next swash. But, uh, but again, those are areas that focus the, the bait, focuses in, uh, the, the current, and that's why uh, the fish tend to hang out there, and especially the snook. Um, and don't be surprised if you're catching snook and in big snook in uh, you know as little as six, eight, ten, twelve inches of water. Uh, and I you know so don't don't hesitate to throw right up on the beach and then reel it right back to you. And uh, I probably catch more that are right on the edge of the beach than I do even on the edge of the uh, the swash in the sandbar. But that's my tip, my my typical target. And that's one of the mistakes I see a lot of people making. And so you know. And I do see a lot of people, and they'll be up on the beach, which again to me gives you a higher profile. Uh, I prefer to keep, you know, into the water a little lower profile. I can also see fish that, that I'm coming up on. And remember, so, since I'm walking into the current, typically the fish are facing away from me, so they're not seeing me as I come. So I'm throwing my bait past them, and I'm retrieving it in the same direction that most of the bait, because the bait typically runs in the same direction as the current or the tide. Those fish are actually stationed or faced into the tide, waiting for that bait to come to them. So it's a much more natural presentation. I'm more likely to sneak up on them than not and not see me because more often than not, if, the, if I can, if the fish sees me, I don't have a chance of getting it. So th that's a really important part of that is to try to make sure that you're fishing so that you're casting up current and then bringing it back or up tide. Uh, in fact, that may be one of the biggest mistakes I see people making is they they're, they're fishing the other direction. Um, so that, that's an important piece, but, uh, but you know, again, I also see people who are out fishing and, and casting straight out. Listen, you'll catch the occasional snook that way, that they happen to bring the lure right across their nose. But it, again, you're, you're, uh, 
when you're casting parallel, you're, you're keeping that bait in the strike zone the entire retrieve as opposed to just a short period of time. So your odds of catching fish are going to be much greater. But those are some of the most important parts about beach fishing, at least in, in my experience, and, uh, and what have really improved my, my rate catch uh, over the years. But, uh, but getting in the water is, uh, is, is, is really important in my opinion. Waiter Dave signing off for Salt Strong. For more, you can check us out at saltstrong.com.